Are you wondering if now is a great time to build your business? I got great news for you today on Coach's Corner. I want to welcome you to another edition of Coach's Corner. It's never been easier to build your coaching business. This is episode number 74. And before we get rolling, I've got a free gift for you. I want you to go to robertimbriali.com forward slash top 10 and download my free ebook, Top 10 Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them Completely and Totally Updated for Our Times. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to have some fun. I promise you fun. We're going to have fun. Hello, my friends. Robert Imbriali here. I want to talk to you today about just this topic that just keeps coming back up again and again and again as I work with coaches. And they go, wow, it's so difficult to build a coaching practice. So difficult to find new clients. It's so difficult to sell them and close them and convince them that I've got the goods and I've got what it takes to be their coach. And I kind of take a little bit of exception to that because the truth of the matter is, I believe that there's never been an easier time to build your coaching practice. Now, I got started way long ago, back in 1995. How many were coaching back in 1995? I remember there weren't many. There were just a handful of us, literally, who were just kind of like forging our way in this, the world of coaching. And it was really interesting because, uh, you know, at that point, there were no courses, there were no books, there were no trainings, there were no webinars, webcasts to learn how to build a coaching practice. So we had to kind of do this on our own right back then, and we had to kind of figure it out, or I started to figure it out back then. How do you close more sales and coaching? How do you enroll clients? What do you even charge, right? Because it wasn't like I could look out there and say, what are their coaches charging? There weren't any. Literally, I was calling myself a business coach back in 1995, and I gotta tell you something really interesting is that there was one other business coach that I could find in the entire country. That was it. I was a business coach, there was another person who was a business coach, and our business coachings were so different and so completely differently priced that we couldn't compare what apples to apples at all. It was more like apples to oranges, although we had you know, the same title. So if I take my, my memory lane here and I go back and I say I'm going to look at 1995, I want to look at what it was like to coach way back when and what it looked like and how I had to find clients and what I needed to do. The truth of the matter is, it wasn't difficult for the time, but if I told you today, uh, you know, what we had to do, you would say, oh my gosh, that's way too much work, right? So back in 1995, in order to get coaching clients, you literally had to see people in person, which meant you needed to put on seminars, which means you needed to rent hotel rooms, which means you probably needed to send out direct mail. Email really wasn't caught on yet in the, for the general public. It was for us, you know, cutting edge type people, we were using it, but truthfully nobody else was. And, you know, we had to do things like that and it cost a lot of money. And I would do uh, a seminar literally every single Saturday. And you might say, wow, that seems like a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun too at the same time. I, I built a mailing list up and every in month I would send out uh, a mailing, literally a mailing to those people. And I would say, hey, seminar this week, here's what we're going to be talking about. And I would charge them a very low price at the time. It was $39 to come to the seminar. And people would send in their checks and, you know, some people would write in their credit card number and mail it back to me and I have to process it manually, right? We didn't have all the online tools that everyone has access to today. And we kind of take for granted all that's happened because... Honestly, it's so much easier. It is so much easier today because of all the tools that we've got. Now, I look at, you know, my, where I got my start in coaching. I look at how I got started, and I don't regret any of it. I think it's just fabulous. I think it was fantastic. Now, I look at new coaches coming up on board today, and the number one thing they run into, you may resonate with this, the technology is just too much of it. There's too many things, they're pushing them in too many different directions. Do you need a funnel? Do you not need a funnel? Do you need a website? Should you be building an email list? Should you be working on social media? And social media, should it be Twitter? Should it be Facebook? Should it be Facebook Live? Should I go live on video? Should I not go live on video? Should I be blogging, right? And you get a thousand questions today. Well, you wanna look at that two ways. You wanna look at it, number one, is it a, a downside or is it something really good? If it's something really good, and I think it is, I look at it uh, from the perspective of we have a lot of options now, right? And the truth of the matter is what I normally coach my coaches on is pick one. You can't go wrong here. You literally cannot go wrong here. Pick one. If you're Facebook Live type person, that's your channel. 
If you're a live seminar person, that's your channel. If you are you know, a Facebook Messenger person, you want to do a bot, that's fine. If you want to do this with a funnel, that's fine too. Just don't go and try to attack everything at the same time. Right? And a lot of people will try to do that. They'll say, oh, oh I need a funnel, and then I need a WordPress website because I need a blog, and yeah, I'm going to need a video camera because you know, I'm going to have to do these Facebook Lives. I'm going to need a good microphone. Maybe I should do a podcast. Maybe, and it just goes on and on and on. And what happens is you burden yourself with so much technology that you can no longer move forward. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I live on the cutting edge of technology. If you saw the studio that I'm in right now and saw all the technology that's in here, it is literally... and I kid you not about this, it's my playground, okay? This is where I come to have fun, because I've got all the tools and all the bells and whistles with the latest cameras come out. You know, I'm out there looking at them. I go to Vegas, I go to the NAB show. I want to find out what's, what the latest and greatest stuff is, but that's me, right? I have a background in this. I actually went to school to become a commercial photographer. So I was doing photo, video, cinema, communications, movie making, all that stuff in college, and the bug would bit me at 12 years old and it's never gone away. So that's just my thing. But it's not something I do uh, for other people. It's not something I do and, and, you know, I'm going to go out and produce your videos for you. I'm going to go make your movies. No, that's not really me. That's not what I'm in, uh, involved in. I'm a coach, right? So primarily that's the work that I do, but that's sort of my fun. Now, you might come in here and get confused and think, well, I've got to have all this stuff. And the first thing I tell everyone is no. You don't need all this stuff. you got to make it really simple for yourself. Whatever you feel comfortable with is all you need. So get away from the idea that all this technology and stuff is just going to confuse you and make it harder for you. That's not where you want to be. Where you want to be is you want to be doing things that work for you. So I have some coaches, for instance, who the only channel that they use is email. Why? Because that's all they understand. And even at that, sometimes it's confusing for them, right? They'll try to send an email. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. And um, where's that button I need to push? And how do I get, you know, the email to go out to everyone? And, you know, how do I schedule it? Little things like that that just trip them up. And I go, technology is just not your thing. Don't be upset about it. And if you can't figure it out, hire somebody that can do it for you. You can kind of find a virtual assistant. You could say, here's the email I'd like to send. Here's my list. Here's my login information. They'll log into your account and they can get that email sent for you. Much better way of doing it, right? So I like to look at everything that we've got going on. Like I said, it really is just the word, you know, the, the, the marketplace today is loaded with opportunity. And I was looking at uh, Facebook today and I was saying, okay, you know, I'm ready to find some new coaching clients. What I want to do is I want to get into, uh, you know, a situation where, uh, you know, I can, I can start uh, some more groups. I been, haven't done groups in a while. I really want to do some group coaching again. I want to get back into that. How am I going to build a new tribe in this new area? And like a lot of people, I start asking the same questions. Okay, should I be doing Facebook advertising? Should I be building a Facebook group? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I? And one thing came across my email today, and I thought it was kind of interesting. There was a woman who uh, claims that she is doing these online challenges and people are sharing the challenge all over the place and she's got some 200,000 people on her mailing list. I don't know about you. I'm going to tell you a little secret here. If you have 200,000 people on your mailing list, you're doing several million dollars a year in business. It is the easiest thing in the world because you have your tribe. Does that mean I'm going to say go out and build your mailing list? Yeah, kind of, but it's not, you know, the most important thing for you. So what I'm going to tell you to do is, is follow along what other people do. So what I did with this woman's stuff is when it came into my inbox this morning, I said, wow, this is interesting. So I clicked on the initial email I got, which was actually from an affiliate. It wasn't actually from her herself. It was an affiliate. So I got that email, clicked on that link, went to the homepage, that landing page that she had set up, and guess what I did? Copied it. Right? I went, and OneNote has a little plug-in. If you, for those of you who use the Microsoft Office suite, OneNote is like my go-to tool for everything. I get everything in OneNote, right? So there's a little clipping tool that you can put into your Chrome browser, and it brings up a little OneNote um, button. Click on that, very simple, and it clips the entire page and copies it into OneNote. Why would I do that? What's the point of doing that, right? It seems like a lot of work. Well, the truth of the matter is we don't come up with these ideas on our own. A lot of people will, you know, stare at a blank sheet and stare at that blank sheet for weeks on end and not come up with anything. So what we always look for is we look for inspiration. Am I going to copy her thing and do exactly what she's doing? Absolutely not. But she's got some great ideas. So what I want to do is I want to look at the ideas. I want to look at what she's doing and I want to model it. So I'm copying out her pages, landing page. 
I'm copying out the resulting email that's sent in response to me filling out that form. An hour later, she sends another email. That's also in OneNote. So when I go to build my own, now I have a model. I'm not starting with a blank page. A very big, big, big cheat. I learned it from Tony Robbins. He calls it modeling. I love the idea. I think it's like the most brilliant thing ever because you will get lost if you start with a blank page. You never, never, never want to start with a blank page. You always want to start with something, right? And I do the same thing if I'm doing a graphic for something. I never start with a blank page. I'll go into Google Images and I'll look and I'll see what other people have done. And I go, oh, I like that font or I like that background. I like to highly match these colors. And I'll use some ideas in creating my own graphic. I don't copy other people's stuff per se, but I model it. I say, I like this, I like this. And we want to do this not only just in, in you know, when it comes to promoting ourselves and marketing and so on and so forth, we also want to be able to do this in every aspect of our coaching practice. So you may want to look at some of the coaches that you know who are very successful. Coaches doing six figures, even seven figures. And you may want to ask some questions about how are they finding new clients? How much do they charge? What kind of packages and programs do they offer? What kind of things do they teach? What is their training? What is their background, right? And as you start to ask these questions, you really get a good picture for what other people are doing because the truth of the matter is we're all kind of doing the same thing, right? In, in, in this range, we're all kind of doing the same thing. Some of us are doing it better than others. Some of us are doing more of it than others, but we're all kind of doing the same thing. So when I looked at this lady's challenge, I said, this is really a cool idea, something I would definitely use, something I would definitely build because I think it has a lot of merit. So I'm enrolled in the challenge. Do I know what it's going to be? I don't know yet. I just enrolled today. So, you know, I'll go through it. I think it's coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to go through it. And then when I'm through it and I've gone through the whole process and I've, you know, looked at the whole thing and looked at what she's done, I'll make a determination. This is something that I want to do. This is a process that I want to model. I'm not going to copy her stuff. Her stuff is her stuff. And she's going to do what she's going to do. I'm not going to do it the same way, obviously, because it's my stuff, right? My challenge is going to be different. The, the prizes for the people who are entering the challenge are going to be different and all of that kind of thing. So, but the model is there, the formula is there. It's so easy today because like I said, it is all in the public eye. It's like, I'm not paying anything. I don't have to do anything. I just signed up. I put in an email address and she's sending me her marketing materials. Now, if I'm smart, I'm copying these marketing materials into OneNote and then I can model this stuff when it comes time to building my landing page. I, my landing page is not going to look like hers. Obviously, it's going to be different. It's going to be built in a different software. It's going to be built with what my thinking is, my background in marketing, and my training in marketing. But it gives me a place to start. Oh, I like where she put this video. Oh, I like where she put the subscribe button. I like the subscribe button. She's got it in red. You know what? I prefer to have it in yellow. It stands out a little more. You know, I'll do things like that. And it's going to be a different looking website, but the modeling, the background of it is going to be the same. And that's why I say, you know, when people say, well, it's hard to build a coaching practice. Really? Are you looking at your email feed? Are you looking at your Facebook feed? Are you paying attention to what other coaches are doing? And most people are going to go, well, you know, I get a little bit busy. I see that stuff. I don't know what it means. I discard it. And I say, well, what about copying it? What about making a copy of it and putting it into something like OneNote? You might use Evernote. You might use something else on the Mac. I don't know. Um, you can do it in any program that makes sense to you. Use it as a model. It's all there. Everyone's stuff is there. You know, it's not that we're stealing from one another, but we're learning from one another. And I really encourage you to do that. And I've always, since day one that I've been teaching internet marketing, I started teaching internet marketing back in uh, 1995, 96, the first seminars that I gave on internet marketing. I would always tell people, go to my website. If you like what you see, take the page, you know, model it, do something similar. And people would, my clients would. And I said, that's great. I love that you're doing that because you're going to get results. Now, are you selling to the same people I'm selling to? No. Are you selling the same products and services? No. Does it matter if your page looks similar to mine? Absolutely not. So not a big deal. So we can do this all day long. And that's why I encourage you. And I say, you know, you've got social media at your fingertips. Every one of us does. Now, I already know, and you don't have to fess up to this. I already know that you're spending time in social media every day single day. Did you know that the information about marketing your practice and building it and finding new clients is in that newsfeed? Did you know that the secrets that you're looking for are in that newsfeed? Did you know that all the web pages that you're looking for and, and the emails that you've got to write, you'll find them in that newsfeed? Now, people don't realize this, but it's there. 
And what I encourage you to do is pay closer attention to that. Because the truth of the matter is, the more attention you pay to it, the more you're going to start to see, hey, this is something I signed up for. And I would ask you, why did you sign up for it? Well, it's what they said, or it was what was in the video, or, you know, I like the landing page, or I like the offer. Guess what? If, if you liked it, there's probably a high probability that a lot of other people are liking it too. And what you especially want to do is you want to look for those promotions that come again and again and again. The only reason they're coming again and again is because they're what? They're working. If they're not working, they're not coming to you again. You're going to see it one time and that's it. So get in the habit of really looking at what other coaches are doing. Look at what I do. Look at what other people do. Look at the, whatever coach that you look up to does and really model that and say, you know, I can use some of these ideas that they're doing. I could use to build my own coaching practice. Now, like I said, back in 1995, that was a lot harder, right? There, first of all, there weren't any coaches. Second of all, there were no coaching training programs. Third of all, no, not really much in the way of internet, right? It was still dial up back then. Still dialing up through America Online to get onto the internet back then. And all this stuff wasn't there and shopping carts didn't exist and it wasn't easy to take orders online or you couldn't process credit cards. You had to do it offline. So there was a lot of stuff that just couldn't happen back then. So it's a lot harder to kind of, kind of snoop and find out what other people are doing. Easiest thing in the world to do today. So when people say it's hard to build my practice today, I say, you know what, you're missing it because it is actually the easiest thing in the world to build your practice today because of the internet and because of what's out there and because you can make videos with your cell phone, right? <laughs> wow, who would have thought of that? I gotta tell you, when I, when I was in college and I was looking, uh, I was taking video classes, you know, the video camera that I wanted was $105,000 and didn't have a quarter of the resolution of today's iPhones. Unbelievable. I mean, it just blows my mind how much power we have in our hands and we don't even know how to harness it. So what I'm encouraging you to do, not to become a techno, techno guy and our gal and, and go crazy with the technology, what I'm encouraging you to do is look at what you're comfortable in using with the technology and use it. Use it to its maximum potential, right? If email's your thing, email every single day if you have to. It's okay. Um, if webinars are your thing, do webinars. If all you can do is voiceover PowerPoint webinars, do those. They'll work for you. You know, webcasts are better video, face-to-face -face video, obviously the best, the highest uh, converting of all, but that may not be your thing. Maybe being on camera is just not your thing. I'm in studio here by myself actually doing this. So, you know, without an audience, sometimes a little bit hard to get animated, get excited about things. But if, you're, if you can do that, great, fantastic, do it. Now, if you are a person who really loves the technology and can build WordPress sites and can use something like Optimized Press and build your funnels out and click funnels or whatever and do all of that stuff and that you enjoy doing, that's a tool. Go ahead and use it. But don't sit back. Don't sit back and be paralyzed by it all and say, I've got to do all these 50 million things because you're never going to do 50 million things. You're going to do one thing. And one thing is all that's required. Do one thing today. And once you've got the one thing working, if you feel like you want to take on thing number two, go ahead and take on thing number two. And then build from there. And it really is that simple. It's not more complicated than that. You can build thing one, thing two, and, and you know, somebody might look at you five years from now and say, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Look at your website. Look at all the videos you've done. Look at all the blog posts you have. Look at all the followers you have. Look how big your Facebook group is. And you can go back to them and say, you know, it wasn't always this way. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2019, when I first got started, I had nothing. I had a Facebook group and I was the only member, right? I had a coaching practice where I only had one client. I have, you know, is, and, and you can go through the story with them and they'll go, wow, I didn't know. Well, you know, it's never too late to start. Now I encourage you to think about what it's going to take to get started today. Never been easier. Get started today. Pick one. Pick one. Just pick one thing and jump in there. Get started. Get rolling. And it's going to make all the difference to not just your business, but all those people that we're out there touching, all those lives that we touch. And then think about this. If you coach one person, you're not just affecting one person's life. You're affecting the lives of all the people that that one person touches. Very ripple effect. Why I still believe that coaching is the most important profession of our time. Got it? Good. You got comments for me? Send me an email. I'm going to put my email address up here. 
uh, just so you have it. Robert at ultimatewealth.com has been my email address now for a very long time. July of 1999, if I remember correctly. It's 20 years I have the same email address. Use it. It's there for you. I want you to use it. Send me an email. Let me know what's going on. Let me know how I can help you. And I will look forward to seeing you again next time on next edition of Coach's Corner. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.